Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to graph a product x times the sine of x, so y equals x times the sine of x. And the best way to do that is to graph the function y equals x, then the function y equals the sine of x, and then multiply the two together. Now I've put a table together right here to help us with the values, and we'll see that in just a moment how that helps. But first, let's graph y equals the sine of x. So let's say that this here is 1, and this here is negative 1. We know that the function bounces between 1 and negative 1. It starts at 0 when x is 0, uh, sine of x is 0, and when we get to pi over 2, we're at maximum value, pi we're back to 0, so the function will look something like this. And then we come down here, and like that. On the other side, same thing. We come down here, we reach the maximum value in the negative sense, back to 0, and then here back to 0, like that. Okay, so that's what y equals the sine of x looks like. So let me just kind of indicate that y equals the sine of x. All right, now we're going to graph y equals x. And of course, that's the line that runs like this at 45 degree angle. Whoop, that didn't quite make the origin. Let me try that again. All right. So this is the line that defines y equals x. And now we need the product of the two. Now what the product means is, for example, right here, when y equals the sine of x equals 1, and then of course y equals, y equals x, when x is pi over 2, then we know that y is pi over 2. And then we have to multiply those two together. That means that the product will be equal to that value, the product of 1 times the pi over 2. And I believe I have that right here. So when x is equal to pi over 2, sine of x is equal to 1, multiply them together. That will be the product. It's about 1.5. And so then the function will be there. Now, what will, what will happen when x is equal to pi? Well, when x equals to pi, sine of x is 0. When you multiply the two together, you get 0. So that means at this point, the function is back down to here. What happens when you're 3 pi over 2? Well, notice when x equals 3 pi over 2, sine of x is negative 1, and therefore the product will be minus 3 pi over 2. 3 pi is almost 10 divided by 2, which is approximately equal to negative 5. And then you can see that at 3 pi over 2, the function will be negative 5, which is down here somewhere, negative 5. We come down here, and so you can see now that the function is bounded by some imaginary line here. Now, if I draw the function y equals negative x, come down in the opposite direction like this. I guess I didn't quite hit the point, so I'll just go right there. Uh, this is y equals negative x. You can then see that what happens is that this function here, the sine function, will oscillate like it normally does, but it will be bounded by these two lines right here. So that the maximum value can only be 1 times this value or negative 1 times this value. And then anything in between, of course, will be smaller. So it will still oscillate, but it will be bounded by the line y equals x and the line y equals minus x. Now on the negative side, we have to be careful because now we have negative values for x multiplied by our normal sine function. So when we multiply the value of the sine function by a negative x, it'll then, of course, flip the function over, and so we basically have this side repeated on the other side like that. So, and I'll show you in just a moment what that will look like. Let me use a red pen here. So again, first we multiply these two together, and let's see here. I have a, so the, the function, the sine function will come up like this, hit this point right there, then it'll come back down to here, then it'll come back down to this point right here, and then of course as it goes back to zero, it goes back to zero, and then it will continue on and of course hit the y equals x line way up there, which of course I'm running out of board space on that. Normally you would expect this to go on like this, but since we multiply the left side of, of the function here, y equals sine of x, times a negative x now, then we kind of have a repeat. We come up here, we come down here, and over here, we're down here somewhere. So the function will go up like this, back to 0, back to negative 5, and then uh, back to 0, and then, of course, way up there where we meet the y equals negative x line. So that, that's what the product of the two will look like. Typically, when you have a product of something like y equals x times a, a, a trigonometric function, the 
this function will simply bound the plus or minus of the trigonometric function, just make it increase because of the multiplication factor that we find when we multiply the two functions together. And so it's kind of an interesting graph, but that's what it looks like.